There are a lot of big companies who are generating a lot of data uh, and usually they generate data on, uh, for example, uh, roads that have been built with public money. Um, they generate data, keep it for themselves and use it to optimize their own company. Um, and with using blockchain technology, you can create uh, a good platform on which to share data. Hi guys, my name is Jochen Vril. I'm the founder of the Open Mobility Network. It's a foundation that develops open source software for the mobility industry. We focus on blockchain technology, of course. And on today's episode of Blockchain Beyond the Hype, I'm going to share with you how blockchain technology performs in the context of smart cities. Enjoy. I would say three important things. Uh, first of all, uh, there's a transaction ledger. So at the, at the moment, we, there are many different banks, many different payment uh, uh, providers, uh, and it would be great if uh, these uh, companies and institutions are able to share their transactions on a, on a shared ledger. So for you, you have uh, one account to, uh, for example, travel using all kinds of uh, forms of mobility. The second one is, um, opening up uh, data, which means that uh, it is basically it's the same thing. Currently, there are a lot of big companies who are generating a lot of data, uh, and usually they generate data on, uh, for example, uh, roads that have been built with public money. Uh, they generate data, keep it for themselves, and use it to optimize their own company. Uh, and with using blockchain technology, you can create uh, a good platform uh, on which to share data. And the third thing um, is that uh, blockchain technology gives um, a, the possibility to protect uh, the identities of people uh, while still connecting to the bigger network. Um, so you can operate with uh, the big uh, big network like, like Facebook, for example, but without sharing your uh, personal data. basically my first uh, biggest company, right? So the, the, it's a virus, it, it's, it's an agency that develops uh, uh, web-based applications, but was always focusing on uh, experimenting a lot with, uh, uh, with AI, with blockchain, uh, already really long, a long time ago. Um, and I started it in 2009 uh, and it still exists. We, we've developed platforms for the biggest companies of the Netherlands, like Heineken, Shell, uh, Miffy, or all the big brands uh, are a client or have been a client so that uh, is, is a beautiful legacy to uh, continue on. So in our companies we always had a lot of interns and um, especially when somebody has a technology background I always uh, tell them that uh, just start doing something and get something online it doesn't matter if it's beautiful or uh, very functional but you have to get your first releases online because if you have something online things will go bad right so you'll get hacked or whatever a lot of uh, things will happen uh, and it's that experience that will allow you to uh, learn much more than you can learn uh, only in school so just start doing start programming something and hope that people start using it and make a lot of mistakes in the context of uh, your study. A city that is able to use technology to uh, have a really prosperous, uh, healthy, wealthy uh, uh, city in which technology is being used um, as an inclusive mechanism, right? So it's not uh, that only the rich or only people who are very capable are able to use uh, technology. So it's also a tool of getting everybody on board, uh, including elderly, poor people. Um, and it's about sharing data and protecting uh, privacy of people. Of course, I'm originally from Amsterdam. Um, 
I think there's still a lot uh, to uh, there's there's still a lot of progress to to be made on the Amsterdam uh, in in, the, in Amsterdam city. However, uh, they do a really good job. So they have actually like they hired somebody as a sort of CTO of the city, and they open up a lot of data, and uh, they, they are pushing really hard, especially on the field of mobility, to um, just push out cars and uh, make more room for people to. Uh, to, to live, breathe, play, uh, so that's really good. Uh, and on the technology part, of course, Singapore is a brilliant uh, city uh, where they really, really push forward on creating uh, their, uh, realizing their pretty bold ambitions. A good example is uh, we are involved uh, in a project where um, we are uh, tokenizing a social welfare card. A government can uh, add tokens to uh, wallets uh, or, uh, to people who are eligible to travel for free. Um, and people can use then these tokens to travel for free. And because it's an open ledger, people can also really see uh, what kind of money the government spends uh, on uh, allowing poor people or elderly people to travel for free. So it's full transparency transparency on that, that one and we can build it in such a way that it connects to the current uh, mobility ecosystem so you can just use your uh, current uh, uh, travel card for example. Yeah, the private sector, of course, is in a, is always in some kind of a battlefield where they think uh, it's uh, the winner takes it all. Uh, however, um, when it comes to mobility, it's not only um, a, a private good, right? The mobility should be a public good, and uh, anybody should be able to travel from uh, A to B uh, with the most. Uh, efficient uh, methods possible. So uh, there is definitely some kind of conflict uh, in there because I think that if Uber generates all this data, uh, then uh, you, on the roads that have been paid with tax money, then you should uh, open up uh, this data. Um, and uh, while a lot of companies claim, uh, again like Uber, that they are fighting congestion, if you just look at the statistics, uh, for example, in, Sing in uh, San Francisco, uh, it's actually more more busy because of Uber. There's more pollution because of Uber and uh, uh, the uh, cost of mobility also have increased. Um, so uh, yeah, with the private sector, we really like to cooperate and we cooperate with a lot of uh, uh, the, the public transport companies and cities uh, and the mobility startups uh, and also other ones. Uh, but there is a conflict of interest because we think mobility should be belong to everybody while other companies are fighting for the, to say, no, it belongs to me. So we have offices in Amsterdam, Singapore, uh, it's true. However, we have recently opened up everything, right? So we've open sourced all our code base and uh, we've also switched to Cosmos, which means that um, Everything we do is open and it allows developers worldwide uh, to tackle, uh, to, to collaborate on this and uh, build like a totally open version of, uh, of Uber. Scaling it up, of course, uh, and it's, I think for most of the blockchains, this is this, uh, the, the big challenge because uh, we have uh, transactions and so we need fast transactions because if you check in in a bus or in, on a scooter, uh, you want to check pay uh, and you don't want to wait for uh, a long time. Um, uh, but however, if you want to have a fully open network, you need some kind of mechanism to make sure that it's safe and then it also becomes uh, slow. So that is the, the main issue. It's not only for us, but it's I think in, uh, uh, in blockchain in general and how we solve it. With Cosmos, we have proof of stake uh, blockchain, uh, which means that in the beginning we have uh, like a, a sort of permission network where we, uh, where we assign the uh, people who are validating for the network and later on we can open it up step by step. Uh, so uh, that gives us a roadmap to uh, fully open it up.
So we started working in 2017 on this project and back then uh, uh, the, the current uh, the state of blockchain technology was very interesting because everybody was in the ICO modus and, uh, and screaming that their blockchain was uh, superior to the, to the other blockchain. But if you really started to build against it, you saw that some things were just not ready yet at the moment. Also because we need a permissioned uh, network because we cannot fully open all the transactions uh, uh, up, especially in public transport. Your check-in data on, on a public blockchain, right? We needed to protect uh, that one, so we decided to build a lot of things from scratch. We use uh, many sawtooth components, uh, which is brilliant if you want to use uh, an environment uh, to uh, that's closed. We have converted everything to uh, to Cosmos. It means a lot of uh, new things we need to build, uh, but it's far more uh, scalable because there is a great community of developers behind it as well. Using a concept like Cosmos, we can build dedicated uh, platforms for each specific feature. So the transaction ledger should be super fast, a ledger where we want to share data, uh, maybe does not need to be super fast, but the other one needs to be. So we can uh, build dedicated uh, software for each uh, feature. So that allows us to have uh, a highly performing network. Then again, if we want to operate at a really, really big scale, there are a lot of challenges that we need to overcome together with our community. That's a good question, of course, but it's true for every open source uh, project. So we need to manage our project really well, incentivize uh, everybody who is contributing uh, uh, on, the, uh, on our mission um, and uh, just make a group of people who are uh, really, really happy to collaborate with each other. And, uh, and I think uh, if we manage to do that, then uh, it's a very, very sustainable model because it has been proven many times that uh, open source uh, initiatives can really, really uh, be super successful. It's an easy question because imagine Uber available to anybody or to any developer uh, to build their own uh, stuff on. I mean, that would definitely beat Uber, right? So that's exactly what we are uh, trying to build. So bye bye, Uber. Yeah, the key is in collaboration. Uh, so if uh, companies are incentivized to share data with each other, uh, then um, uh, a journey can be planned much more efficiently. So if you want to travel from A to B uh, and it's very efficient with a taxi, but then you, uh, it's more efficient to take public transport, if both of them are aware of the possibility and uh, have incentives to share this data and collaborate, everything will be much uh, efficient immediately uh, from there uh, because we can basically use our resources much more effectively. Yeah, of course, the whole uh, concept of a smart city is closely connected to the availability of uh, data and the availability of the data of everyone because a 14 year old brilliant kid with a genius ID should have access to the same data as uh, bigger mobility companies have. Because if you all collaborate on um, solving issues which are public, uh, then uh, the whole idea of a smart city can really come to life. And it's, uh, if there is no data publicly available, yeah, good luck um, uh, creating an innovative atmosphere where uh, people and companies collaborate on achieving the, uh, these big goals. You have to also take a little bit back in uh, time uh, because uh, after the internet uh, bubble bursted, the big companies uh, arrived like Google, uh, Facebook, uh, Uber. And what they did is um, they built really beautiful applications that you use all the time. 
um, and they harvest data uh, with it. And so the only way to connect with these big networks is to basically give away all your privacy and, 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 uh, and they monetize it all that badly. Just today, uh, it was in the news that um, Google employees actually listen uh, on the Google Home uh, device. Uh, so if you have a Google Home device in your house, People, real people, so no, uh, also algorithms, but also real people just listen with you. Uh, that, that you, it's um, uh, beyond imagination that I think we allow such a thing to exist. Um, blockchain technology uh, would allow uh, people to interact with big networks uh, while uh, maintaining their privacy. Uh, on general, uh, you can say that using blockchain technology, we can build a very connected world in which uh, people can remain individuals. And uh, the, that aspect has a lot to do with uh, privacy and sharing data in a way that, um, uh, that protects you as a person. It's already uh, booming, of course, and it's beyond the crypto hype, right? So uh, you see that bigger companies have already hired uh, people who, are, who should uh, investigate uh, blockchain technology. So they've decided that blockchain is one of the bigger things. Same with AI. Um, so the, this market is really, uh, uh, it's in one hand, it's just in the beginning, uh, but on the other hand, it's, uh, it's booming because people think and see that, okay, yes, maybe I've missed some part of the internet bubble and uh, it's not going to happen again it's especially with with banks huh? in the netherlands you see that many banks are involved in big uh, blockchain uh, projects and i think it has something to do uh, with them missing out on the internet bubble so i've hoped you enjoyed watching this episode and if you're curious about blockchain and want to know more you should follow blockchain zoo social media and also subscribe to their youtube channel of course see you again bye